It seems like today the world is full of people. There are 7.4 billion of us after all, and it seems like everywhere has already been discovered. There are satellites, an international space station, GPS, and there have even been explorers like this gentleman after all. But it didn't always used to be like this. The world used to be a much larger place. The question is, where and when was the last piece of land on Earth that was discovered by humans? To start literally at the beginning of humanity, we go back to Ethiopia in 195,000 BC. We don't really know exactly when humanity discovered certain parts of the world this long ago, but we do have our best guesses that we can make based off of fossil evidence that has been discovered. So, let's go with our best guesses for now. The oldest Homo sapiens fossils to date were found in Ethiopia, so human exploration likely started from here. With an entire world to explore, it took until 140,000 to 160,000 years ago for humans to discover modern-day Sudan. But by 125,000 years ago, humans had reached the southern point of the African continent, and at the same time had also crossed the sea into Arabia, or modern-day Yemen. This new group of Arabian-based humans had reached Israel by 100,000 years ago, and Oman by 75,000 to 125,000 years ago. Back in Africa 90,000 years ago, humanity had reached the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Back over again in Asia 70,000 years ago, humans first arrived in India, and 67,000 years ago had reached the Philippines, marking the first time that humans arrived in Oceania. 50,000 years ago, humans first arrived in Taiwan, and 50,000 to 80,000 years ago, humans also arrived in Egypt. For the first time, humans arrived in Australia 48,000 years ago. Those early settlers to Australia and their descendants would remain almost completely undisturbed by the rest of the human population until 1770 with the arrival of Captain James Cook, a guy who liked doing that a lot. We'll get back to him later. So about 47,000 years ago, humans arrived in Japan, and 1,000 years later arrived in Laos and Indonesia. Finally, 45,000 years ago, humans arrived in Greece, which was the first place and first time that humans arrived in Europe. Usually, when humans arrive somewhere for the first time, things die, so naturally the Neanderthals of Europe would mysteriously vanish 5,000 years later. Humans settled Italy 43,000 years ago, and based on our knowledge of fossils, somehow skipped France and arrived in the UK around 43,000 years ago, and Germany 42,000 years ago. On the other side of the world, humans had discovered China 39,000 to 42,000 years ago, Tasmania 41,000 years ago, and New Guinea 40,000 years ago. Sometime later, 34,000 years ago, humans got around to discovering Sri Lanka, and then we discovered another new continent. North America was settled 25,000 to 40,000 years ago from across that land bridge that used to exist, because walking somewhere is somewhat easier than inventing boats to sail there. And that's why there were millions of people already here when Columbus arrived, but anyway, by 28,000 years ago, a good chunk of Europe had been explored, including France, the Czech Republic, Romania, Poland, and Russia. Portugal was finally reached 24,500 years ago, and Sicily 20,000 years ago. So, strangely, this means that humans had reached North America before humans reached Portugal. But anyway, the mainland United States was first reached 16,000 years ago, and humans first arrived in South America 14,800 years ago, where the oldest remains have been found in Chile. Back across the ocean in Europe, Scandinavia was first settled by humans in around 9,200 BC, and Ireland in 7,700 BC. The Baltic states were first settled around then in 7,600 BC. Over in Asia, Cambodia was reached in 7,000 BC, and this super remote island above Siberia called Zhokov Island was somehow discovered back in 6,300 BC, which is weird because there's still a lot left undiscovered. Jumping back a continent, Malta was discovered in 5200 BC, and across another ocean, Puerto Rico was eventually discovered in 4000 BC, which coincidentally is when the Sid Meier's Civilization Games all begin. This is presumably when people started sending out their settlers for the first time. Greenland was reached in 2000 BC. Fiji, Vanuatu, and Samoa were all reached around 1000 BC by the Polynesians. A while went by with no new discoveries until 290 AD when Hawaii was also finally discovered by the Polynesians. They remained there undisturbed by the rest of humanity until 1778, when that same guy named James Cook had to land on their islands as well. Anyway, the next big discovery was Madagascar, which despite being enormous and right next to Africa, remained undiscovered by humans until 500 AD. The Roman Empire rose and fell, and in that entire time there were no humans on Madagascar. 
Madagascar. What else is weird is that the first settlers here didn't come from Africa like you would think, but came on canoes all the way from Borneo across the entire Indian Ocean. So, moving on, the Faroe Islands above Scotland were discovered in 600 AD, the Bahamas in 850 AD, and Iceland remained untouched by humanity until the Vikings found it in 874 AD. The final significantly large and habitable place to be discovered by humans was New Zealand, which saw no humans until the arrival of the Maori Polynesians sometime between 1250 and 1300. Next, we enter the Great Age of European Exploration, in which we're about to find out, only resulted in the real human discoveries of a few scattered islands. The Portuguese are the first humans to land on six of these islands in a row. Madeira in 1420, the Azores in 1439, Cape Verde in 1462, Annabon in 1474, Sao Tome and Principe in 1485, and one poor exiled Portuguese soldier landed on St. Helena in 1516. The only place the Spanish were the first to arrive at were the Bonin Islands south of Japan in 1543, and the Polynesians landed on the Chatham Islands in 1550, the last such Polynesian discovery. Back over in Europe, this frozen hellhole called Svalbard remained untouched by humans until an English whaler landed here in 1604. Bermuda was landed on by a group of shipwrecked Englishmen in 1609, and Jan Mayen was also first landed on by a whaler in 1615. Mauritius was landed on by the Dutch in 1638, and the dodo quickly vanished from the island afterwards. Reunion Island was reached in 1642 by the French, Tristan de Cunha by the Dutch in 1643, the Falkland Islands by the English in 1690, which would remain almost totally irrelevant until Margaret Thatcher, Rodriguez Island in 1691 by the French, Ile St. Paul and Ile Amsterdam both by the Dutch in 1696, Ascension Island was first landed on in 1701 by 60 shipwrecked Englishmen who were stranded there for two months. The Seychelles in 1770 by the French. The Kerguelen Islands in 1772 also by the French. South Georgia in 1775 by that overachiever James Cook once again. Lord Howe Island in 1788 by the British and Prince Edwards Island in 1799 by the French. By 1800, there really wasn't a whole lot left to discover, but that didn't stop people from trying and succeeding. The South Shetland Islands were landed on in 1819 by the British, Mat Island in 1820 by the Russians, the South Orkney Islands in 1821 by the British, and the Crozee Islands also in 1821 by some British sealers that got shipwrecked and stranded there for over two years. Well, that's about it. Ah, right. Except for the seventh continent that's bigger than Australia at the bottom of the globe. Antarctica was never even seen with human eyes until 1820 when this Russian explorer discovered it, but failed to actually land on it. That means that humans had seen the planet Uranus before anybody had ever seen Antarctica. So after seeing it in 1820, it took a while to actually land on the continent. It wasn't until 1895 that the first confirmed landing happened by a team of Norwegians. And with that moment, every piece of land on planet Earth from 195,000 BC all the way until 1895 had been finally landed on by the human species. So thank you all for watching this video. I hope that you found it informative or interesting, and if you did, feel free to post in the comments to continue the discussion. If you're interested in informative videos like this one in the future, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking here, and you can check out some of my other videos over here on the left. Thank you all for watching again, and we'll see you all next time.